Silicon Valley, technology, art, green, and sustainability. Welcome to another episode of Silicon Valley Tech, Art, Green, and Sustainability, SV Tags. Today, I'm very honored to have a woman winemaker with me who I met, I don't know, a couple months ago. Very recently. Um, owner of Selby Wines. Yes. Susie Selby. Thank you for joining us. Ah, the pleasure's mine. Yeah. Very happy to be here. I'm a new fan of San Jose as well. Awesome. Um, I haven't actually been up to your area in a long time, so I'm going to have to come up and visit soon. But before we, before we start talking about the winery, let's talk about... Um, where you started. Have you always been a winemaker? What did you do before this? And what's your background? You know, Heather, I grew up in Dallas, Texas, and um, I went to Vanderbilt, and I have a degree in economics, and I have an MBA from George Washington University. And I, I started out by doing uh, fundraising for nonprofit organizations. My first job was working for a ballet company. My, my next job was with a hospital. I also worked for a uh, public radio and television. Was that funds. in California or? No, that was in, um, I was in Washington DC first, obviously at George Washington, but I, I lived in Austin and Atlanta and decided I wanted a career change and oddly I went into the fitness industry. And this was back, you know, I, I hate to say there's some wow, video, economics, video out there. <laughs> fundraising and then fitness. And then fitness, I became very involved in fitness and it was, it was sort of the post Jane Fonda era, but um, but I loved it, and I, I started learning the business of fitness. And even though I was a fitness instructor, I became a marketing consultant. So I have a little bit of a diverse marketing background, and so the first career was spending time um, raising funds for, for nonprofits, and then I, I was in fitness. and. It was a. Um, and you look so young that it's like it doesn't seem like you would have had that long of a career already. Well, thank you. <laughs> yes, I was extremely young when I started, and and then I decided to move to California and go into the wine industry. And so uh, let's pull up the first slide here, um, and I think yep. So this is the front of your your wine tasting room. Yes, that is the tasting room, and that's also a photograph of one of the vineyards that I utilize. So uh, my, my background is fairly, well, extremely unique. To, to be honest, I don't know anybody else who has the same um, background I have in the industry. It's, a, it's an industry that is very um, coveted. People want, want to do what I do. I find the most fabulous part of the industry that it's a combination of art, science, uh, and history. And you know, I, I love the whole tags concept, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to segue for just a moment and say that when I read your website and people describe art in so many ways and and you describe it as art art makes you smile and brings you pleasure and transforms you to another place and and I like to think um, I like to think that wine is art and the and we're making people happy and I promise I'm not talking about the blood alcohol content here <laughs> it's it's an enjoyment and it, it's um, you know it's the romanticism of it and and everything about the background of wine is just is so fabulous and really follows what your organization is all about thank you yeah and I remember that you were saying that you told your father that you wanted to go in the wine industry and, and what was his reaction well my my father was very excited about being in the wine industry and I was fortunate my, my father was a, a wonderful man he was a famous spine surgeon <gasps> Wow. and a Vietnam veteran and Vietnam War hero and all these wonderful things. And I decided to go into the wine industry with him. And he, he was very, very excited about it. And for the first three years, I learned the wine industry. Um, I learned how to make wine. His primary role at the winery was that he was drinking all of our profits. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> literally, he was. And um, he lived in Texas at the time, and he would come out to California at both my parents would, but my dad would help me, would taste the wines and blend the wines, and he, he always loved wines, and I, I grew up uh, traveling quite a bit internationally and had great exposure to um, mostly European wines, so French and Italian, and it's something you can tell when you 
you taste the wine. So, so he and I started it with 150 cases of, of Chardonnay back in 1993. Wow. So, and we've grown since then. I, I'll tell you, uh, when we produced this 150 cases of Chardonnay, back in the day, the big, oaky, buttery style was very common, and that's not what, what we liked. We liked something a little more balanced. And uh, the whole concept was that if you create a product and you have no idea what to expect in the future, y the backup plan was to drink the wine. So we made something that we like because if people aren't going to buy it, it's fine. We'll drink it. We'll share it with our friends. We'll do whatever we have to do. But I've, I've really, in a very strong way, have abided to that, that rule um, of only making things that, that I love. So I make wines for me. I don't make them for other people. And, and I'm very, very, it's very rewarding when people enjoy the wines. I'm going to pull up another slide too, which is, uh, let's pull this next one up. And this is another, is this the same tasting room or is this? Yes, this, yes, this is the tasting room. I, I um, have been in that tasting room since 2002. And uh, my, you know, my journey was, was a very challenging one because my dad passed away unexpectedly in 1997. And at the time, um, he he had not. So you started the winery in '92, and then we, yeah, we started it in five years later, and he he passed away, and he he died of an aneurysm uh, shortly after Father's Day. It I'm was, so it sorry. Was, well, it, yeah. I I miss him every day, and yeah. he truly was my inspiration. But I I wanted to keep the winery going, and my my mother really felt that I should move back to Texas and get married and raise a family, and I should have listened to my mother. <laughs> Listen to your mother when she tells you something like that. I mean, and it, it's been it's been an amazing. Do you have children? I do not have children. Okay. And Me either. so my. The, the career took precedent, right? So. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, so, so my, 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 all my maternal instincts go to my, to my wines. Which is why it's so wonderful, probably, then. Yeah. Well, I definitely have a, a feminine winemaking touch, I would say, and I was one of the, um, the only women winemakers really at the time that was an owner as well, and, and that still is true today. I have no partners or investors, and I now produce, well, I've been as high as 25,000 cases. I'm down to about 15,000 cases. So I, but, but it's When a, was the height of the, the winemaking for you then? It was probably about uh, six years ago, and then I decided to get smaller, and you'll see the, the tasting room that is in um, I will I will give a quick plug for my fabulous city, Hillsburg, Let's California. Let's pull up another um, photo too, because I think we might have another tasting room. There we go. It is beautiful. It's, um, it's so pretty. Yeah, it's really beautiful. And we'll pull up another one really quick again. So I think there's two of the tasting. Oh, this is actually of your vineyards then? Yes, that's one of my favorite vineyards actually. Right down. Yeah, so um, I was actually really impressed. I, in my 20s, drank white wine. And then in my 30s and 40s, and I'm approaching 50 now, would drink red. And I was really impressed with your white wine. I've not had a white wine that I've wanted to actually purchase or be part oh, of the wine club nice. because of the white wine. And it was just a beautiful taste. Um, and I know you. all the ladies that were at the, there was a wine dinner and you were the featured um, winery, you know, woman winemaker there. And um, everybody was just really impressed with you and, and the wine, so. Well, and this was, it, it was a fun dinner. What a wonderful group of women. Yeah. All these very, um, very interesting women from Silicon Valley. I loved it. So, so. it's, so the winery's been around for quite a while. Um, how many employees too do you have? Um, it's, it's pretty, sm given my production size, I'm fairly small. I, I am very much a hands-on winemaker. I still am the backup. Well, and, and let me, and let me tell you a little bit, and sure. I, I'm only saying this because women frequently want to get into the industry and it, it's difficult. And the reason it's difficult is because physical strength is required um, in, in a seller. And I, I don't hire women necessarily because they're not, st I mean, only because they're not strong enough. And you just need a lot of strength. And um, I, it, I'm not saying I don't hire women. I hire women in marketing, and I, and I have had women come through. But you need to be able to lift test, 50, 60, 70 pounds. Well, you need to be able to move hoses and, and clamp down tanks and do all of those things. But when I, my, my big, um, a big turning point of my career, and this was right after my father passed away, I was working at another winery called Rabbit Ridge and a truck driver needed his, 
his truck loaded. And at the time, I was focusing more on marketing. I opened the tasting room for them. Um, and I said, well, I don't know how to drive a forklift. He said, I have four daughters. And if, if any of my girls ever said they couldn't do something because it's, it's seemingly gender specific, I would be furious. He said, get on that forklift. You can do it. And, and so the truck drivers taught me how to drive this forklift. And, and I became the best forklift driver at the winery. And I, I went up, I learned how to forklift barrels. And the, the bottom line is I became a key position. And you can only manage people if they respect you and what you can do for the position. And, and I did fill barrels. I did all the cellar work. I didn't do, in, I, obviously I had a few physical limitations, but I was the first one there in the morning and the last one to leave at night. And